Hey guys, it's Dawn here, and um, okay, here's my update. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, I did a 35, about I, I, about 35 mile um, night ride, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. It was my first night ride, first whole night ride. My 80 mile ride from a long time ago um, went into the night, but we still ended at um, uh, 10:30 around there. This one started late, um, and then uh, I didn't even get home till two in the morning, which was only a problem because the very next day, Sunday, I had that 74 mile ride. Um, it was an exploratory ride around um, Lake Castaic area, um, and Marty, um, it was led by Marty um, and Cato, and um, th there was a few of us, and none of us had ever done um, a, an EUC ride there before so when it, it was like an exploratory ride for us so you know don't know what's going to happen and it was going to be like 90 degrees out and here in Southern California and all that stuff so um, <laughs> it, it, it was a little bit hard but the thing is after doing long distance like one day long distance then the next step up is to do back and back um, so I did a I did a shorter ride 35 miles Saturday um, and then right after back to back then 74 miles and that'll build my endurance even more so um, so that was the goal of that thing plus learning how to night ride so learning how to night ride um, first off I love my helmet the scorpion the scorpion EXO um, AT50 and I've shown I've shown you guys this before um, but just real quick again, I have, I have this on here, which is sometimes really annoying to me, but still I love it enough to where I'm, you know, I'm willing to deal with it. But, um, oops, I always stuff my gloves in my helmet. Um, so you have your different modes. You have your full face mode, and then you have your open face mode. And in open face mode, then you have your sunglasses and the Oh my gosh, the, this yellow lens like makes it so nice up in the mountains because it makes all the greens really pop and then it makes the reds pop and stuff and it helps with contrast. Some people like to use it for night. I don't. I still want clear for night. So um, I did change out this visor, uh, my mirrored visor. It's very easy to, to change out these. You just use, um, I use a quarter take this off pop off the top visor um, pop this off pop the clear visor on and stuff like that so um, so yeah but while it's in this mode then you also have your sun sunglasses um, down here your sun visor down here and then you got this fight but anyways it's so nice at breaks to be able to open this up and just have like air so I, I don't feel claustrophobic but um, I love this thing and I was able to put a headlamp on I have velcro onto the back over here so uh, uh, oh the mount the mount is try to go quick because I think I have a lot to cover the oops so I velcroed the mount onto the back and then this will just slide right onto the mount and then what I found out was that this part of a headlamp actually has this clip right there and that clip actually clips right into this part of the visor that is actually um is like a little vent flow thing but this little clip will actually and i'm not going to struggle with this right and i put i the only reason why i put duct tape on here is because while i'm sliding this clip on i don't want it to try to lessen the scratching lessen it scratching up the the visor anymore so it just goes on that easy and i'm still able to um turn this um and then i have this here and the other good thing uh, the great thing about this is that you you turn it on the normal way but if you hold this down then the sensor comes on and when you wave your hand, it will turn it on and turn it off. It doesn't matter how you wave, anything going, there's a little motion sensor 
Oh, right there. There's a motion sensor right there. And so when something go passes over the sensor, it turns it on and off. And that just makes it really quick and easy so that, you know, when, when I'm riding, then I can just turn it off, turn it on, so I don't blind people and stuff, and I can still turn it. So that was that was really good. And then to turn that whole thing off, you just press this button, to turn the whole thing off. It makes it super easy to, to and it's, it's also really good because like, um, okay, I do have the upgraded, um, I do have the upgraded head, headlight on my Max now. And there's several parts to it. You, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. You have to, you have to have the the updated light, um, and then you need the 3.5 millimeter plug. You need to solder those together, um, solder. I don't know. Um, and and then you need to mount it. And Flyboy Adam, he made, he designed, made this uh, 3D print adapter mount adapter that you can print out. And if you use that, you don't need to modify the existing bracket. You just use your existing headlamp bracket and and you put the adapter in and I, th I think you need some screws and then you screw that in and stuff. I wish I had gone that route, but um, I had already bent my bracket because the traditional way is to just bend the original bracket. But once you bend it, you can't bend it back. And I really hated bending the, the I, I really hated bending the bracket and stuff. I made it work and it works great, but now it's permanent like that, you know, and I can't go back. Um, so I would recommend going Flyboy's route. And, you know, if I could do it again, I would have gone that route. Um, and then I have this flashlight and this flashlight is small enough and everything. Um, it has a zoom feature and it is super bright um, as well. And it doesn't get too hot. You have your different modes. Um, I I don't like anything zoom feature. I don't like anything less than several thousand lumens. And it's funny because I got one that was like I don't know one hundred thousand lumens, and it still wasn't as bright as this one. Um, and th I think this one is rated at six thousand lum, five thousand, six thousand lumens. But it is it is one of my and I have a collection of flashlights because I have a thing about flashlights. I like them. Um, you have a little bit of self-defense stuff over here to um, grip and then you got a nice strap. Okay, so, but pretty much any flashlight. But the good thing about um, the flashlight, you can wave it around to point at things that on your sides that your headlamp isn't getting, um, your headlight, and then your headlamp isn't getting. You can always also do that. You can throw the light out further ahead of you if you're out running your light, um, your headlight and stuff. And then the, I don't know, the, the headlamp is nice just to have hands free for when you are not riding and you're at a break and stuff and it's still super dark out and you still need to do stuff. So um, each of those lights, and honestly, I don't think you can have, well, I don't feel like you can have too many lights. I, I like lights, I don't like the dark. <clears throat> the other thing that was really awesome was Dan. Dan made me this thing. And um, so it's this. And then it's it's this button here. And it's and then he made he he did this part. He made it to this strap so that I could strap it onto and I guess um, <clears throat> him and his crew they they pretty much all use this and if you know roger roger loves this thing so he he said it's his most favorite accessory by far and it's just it's just really well it's a it makes putting on my gloves a little bit more clunky because i gotta do like this um like but it's you see it's not that bad okay so then you turn it like this and you you can always have your your finger right on the button to push. Oh, here. So there's different there's different beeps and chirps. This is the chirp, and I like the chirp. Um, and then there's other ones. And to, to do that, you hold down the horn button until it changes. You put your hand over so it doesn't sound so loud, and then you hold down, and then it'll do a different type of beep. And then you let go, and then when every every time you do the short beeps, then it'll stay at that mode. Um, but every time you you do this, 
it also flashes as well so it's very bright it's very loud and it's really nice and it's super easy and it's very accessible it's right there for you and it has a light feature so the top button or this beeper bu button light button so the light button you hold down the light button until the light comes on and then each single press <clears throat> will give you a different mode and here's this is a blue I, i'm i'm in you know daylight right now but this is the blue light and here's a red flashing and then a blue f oh blue and red flashing so you have different modes as well and it's very bright and and it's very loud and i love it so there you go um then you just hold that down and then i'll turn it off i love it okay so that um those were some new things that i did for the night ride and my top oh i hit my new top speed my new top speed on my max is 45.9 miles an hour and it was it was great because um dan who is fast he actually uh rode up to me at the light and and he just gently touches my shoulder and he goes just so you know um you are you are on your second set of of beeps <laughs> speed beeps i'm like okay that's fine you know i'll i'll make sure not to exceed any further um i, I was told by jason at ewills not to exceed 45 miles an hour and i don't remember if he said if i should keep it under 45 miles an hour or if i shouldn't exceed 45 miles an hour but i'm 45.9 so technically well, I don't know. So, so yeah, I, I don't want to go any faster. I want to play it safe, but still, um, it, it, the, the Max is just so smooth and so stable at high speeds. It's just so easy to like, to like forget and, and like, just, you, you, you just feel like it can, it can go. It's so easy. It can just keep going. There's no, there's no problem, you know, but I know that that's how, that's how people get that sense of security. And then it cuts out, you know, if you hit an unexpected bump and stuff, um, and all that. So I know, I know, I know, and, and I'm going to definitely try not to, um, exceed that any further, but it is hard when people are zooming by you and you gotta, you gotta give chase. Um, <laughs> anyways um so that was a lot of fun then we did um then we did the big ride at um it was 74 exploratory ride around lake castaic it was hot it was 90 degrees out i'm wearing full gear thank you marty for the pictures and i'm sure i didn't get video because he was getting video and he is a much 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 better videographer and video editor <clears throat> person than I am like uh, you know I'm a newbie at that but he's a pro so watch for his video on it uh, about that ride because it was a beautiful ride and it was great and I loved the roads um the roads were crappy <laughs> a, a lot of the roads were crappy but oh the best thing was that we basically had the whole mountain to ourselves um, I mean, we all stayed in our lanes pretty much and, and all that. We still acted good and stayed, but it was, it was really nice. It, it was like n not a lot of traffic at all. And towards the end, it was like, we, we didn't even see, you know, hardly anybody out there other than us. Um, some of the roads was, um, off-roady stuff. Um, like the roads all cracked up and dirt and marty got attacked by a rattlesnake <laughs> he, he rode by in a rattlesnake like struck at him but um he has motorcycle boots on and and so you know um so it, it, it was it was fine it was it was not a big deal but it was just really funny and then we saw another rattlesnake um uh but anyways it was kind of off-roady and stuff so so i was i was no choice i had to hit each of these dips and every time I hit these dips, oh my gosh, it was hurting my knees. And, and, you know, just repeatedly doing that over and over again. So I finally got desperate and I'm behind Kato. And Kato's an excellent rider. And Kato, and I'm watching him, and over, over the big dips, he's jumping them. So then, you know, I don't know how to jump. I'm a newbie. 
but I'm so desperate. So I was like, you know what, for, you know, just, just try. So I was just doing little baby jumps, but then I started doing bigger jumps as I started feeling more comfortable. And I was like, Hey, I can do this. This is fine. Nowhere in my mind did I think it was possible for me to jump a max because my max is, first of all, it's really, it's a really heavy wheel naked. And then with me on it, and then with all the gear that I put on it, I mean, I was probably carrying 170 pounds. My max was probably carrying 170 pounds, me and my gear and my two water bottles and my EDC kit and stuff like that on strapped onto the back of it. When I do these long distance exploratory rides, I wanna make sure I have everything in case of an emergency. <clears throat> Plus it was <clears throat> like 90 degrees, super hot, so we needed lots of water. Um, because uh, not only do I drink water, but I pour water on myself and that's how I keep cool from evaporative action. So anyways, um, I, we're doing these jumps and all of a sudden I'm feeling, I'm feeling the wheel come up with me. And the thing is, I try to jump my RS by standing and holding my pull-up bar. I, I got a pull-up bar on the doorway of my bedroom. So what I do is I'm holding the pull-up bar <laughs> and to make sure I don't fall. And then I have my wheel and I'm trying to jump and see if I can lift the wheel with me when I jump. And when I do that, it feels impossible. And then I was, I kind of gave up on the whole idea of me jumping. I was like, this is impossible. How am I, 135 pounds, supposed to, you know, jump with any kind of height and lift a big old wheel with me? I was so frustrated, but I didn't take into account momentum and not not lifting dead weight but but riding and 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 influencing momentum and i and it was weird i started getting the sensation that instead of instead of doing a jump like this i somehow i was waving my body and doing a scoop and when i did a scoop my wheel was coming with me and I don't think I was getting any air, but I was able to go over ditches that were under, you know, to where like I could jump and, and my wheel and me felt nothing of the ditch when before it was like, boom, 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 like that. So I'm like super excited because, because I have the first, I have the first step to like jumping and then of course you know i i have to catch this little wave and go foop, foop, like that so anyways um it was just really interesting it was unexpected it was something that i had given up on i didn't think it was possible and then out of desperation and the um, unknowing instruction from kato I was able to do jumps and so I'm really, really excited and happy about that because after that, I was jumping everything. I was like, yay. Um, so that was a lot of fun and learned a lot and um, great and watch for Marty's video on it. Um, it'll, it'll probably be called something like Lake Castaic EUC Ride and he is called Electric Unicycles on YouTube. And he's an actual YouTuber, not like me. Uh, so anyways, I think that is it i now added another 107 miles on under my belt so i'm getting close getting close to a thousand miles on the euc and um that'll be a yay still feel like a total newbie um but i've i've tasted dirt riding i've tasted how to do a drop um after this video i'm going to put I'm going to put some little clips on um, uh, some photos. Uh, thank you, Marty, for photos. I think I, we got a group photo and a photo of me. You'll be able to see all of my gear um, that I wear and stuff like that, too. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for joining me today, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.